Speaker Nancy Pelosi, though, slamming Facebook over election, quote, misinformation. I'm not a big fan of Facebook. I don't, I don't know what they have been doing, but I know they've been part of the problem all along. Social media, the technology is a blessing, but it's a double-edged sword in terms of communication, democratizing the spread of information. And I would hope that they would have some sense of responsibility. Our next guest says he was censored on not one, but three social media platforms and argues that a free exchange of ideas is doomed under a Biden presidency. Joining me now is the author of The Parasitic Mind, Gad Sad. Gad, good morning to you. So why is free expression doomed potentially under a potential Biden administration? Well, if you first, thank you for having me. If you look at uh, the political donations that Democrats versus Republicans give to big tech companies, they're in the order of 92 to 99 percent tilted towards the Democrats. So while both parties have not been very good at reining in some of the intrusions that the social media companies have engaged in, certainly it won't get better if Joe Biden is the president. Yeah, both sides of the aisle, Gad, complain about social media. But it's interesting. One side seems to be calling for less censorship, and one side seems to be asking, in the case of Nancy Pelosi, you hear it there, for more censorship from places like Facebook. Well, look, there's a long tradition of ideologues seeking to regulate uh, the free exchange of ideas. The Soviet unions would send you to gulags or to psychiatric institutions, right? They would pathologize disagreements. In the Middle East, where I hail from, off with your head if you say something that criticizes the religion in place or the dictator in place. In the West, we can't engage in such dra drastic actions, but we can try to ruin your reputation, uh, remove your account from Twitter. So there are so the reflex is the same, but the method of stopping the freedom of, of exchange changes. But do you think that method will get more formal, get more ruthless? Um, in other words, will you see governmental calls for more censorship on places like Facebook under the guise of quote unquote misinformation? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, again, based on the fact that, uh, you know, big tech tilts so much towards the left. I mean, academia is probably the place where I reside, where it's the most leftist. Big tech is probably second. Media is probably third. And so I suspect that under a Joe Biden uh, administration, it's only going to get worse. And as you said earlier, I repeatedly get censored on all of the social media platforms for completely right. innocuous things. I don't have a ton of time, Gad, but I'm a fan of your work. I'm familiar with um, your research and thoughts. And so I want to ask you a little bit of a bigger question with not much time. Um, the internet was supposed to give us access to a diversity of ideas, but every time I look up, I seem to see more and more sameness. Sameness of pop culture, sameness of what's cool, sameness of ideas enforced ruthlessly. Is the internet giving us this promise of diversity or is it forcing us all to conform to one thought process? Uh, I mean, I think it's it's a bit of both, right? I mean, if you want to look for people who share your thoughts, you can find it. The problem is that the ones who rule these platforms are the ones who are trying to impose this conformity, and we need to fight back against it. Yeah, it's starting to all just sound the same. And if you dare to sound different, well, that's when you get banished, kicked off, whatever it may be. Gad said, thanks so much for your time this morning. Cheers. Thank you. All right.